Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic, back with the next video in our series of videos covering basic circuit analysis. So last time we looked at the node voltage method, and the node voltage method gave us a very simple but powerful way of solving for the voltage at every node in a circuit. And then once we know the voltage at every node, we can calculate current just using Ohm's law. So this method today, which is called the mesh current method, this method works similarly to it. Uh, it's a little different, but it works very similarly to the null voltage method in that it's a very easy and powerful way to solve these circuits. Okay, so like I said, let's. This method is called the mesh current method, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it is. But first, we're going to talk about how it compares to the node voltage method. So node voltage. Let me. I'll do NV for node voltage, and we'll do a table here. So node, node voltage and MC for mesh current. Okay. So node, node voltage solves for the voltage. So it solves the voltage at every node. Mesh current is going to solve for the current. You see it's in the name. We're solving for the current in every mesh or every closed loop. Okay. Node voltage is based on Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, the fact that the current into a node must equal the current out of a node. For the mesh current, we're going to be using Kirchhoff's voltage law to get these equations. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law, I'll just make it a little aside over here, is that the is that the sum of all the voltages, so the voltage rises or drops on a closed loop, has to be equal to zero. Okay? So we're, we'll use that later on, you'll see how. And then for node voltage, like we said, we use Ohm's law to solve for current. So Ohm's law will give us current. For mesh current, we'll have the current through every mesh, so then we'll use Ohm's law to get voltage. So both of these, to completely solve the circuit, you're going to need Ohm's law. And then node voltage required a linear equation solver. Mesh current is also going to require a linear equation solver. Okay. So before we get started with an example, I just want to say, once again, you know, I said it in the previous video, but I'll reiterate that typically you'll probably like one of these methods better than the other. And for, you know, for some circuits, mesh current might work better than node voltage. Okay? Uh, it's good to understand both of them, but if you prefer one more than the other, so for instance, I prefer node voltage typically more than mesh current, then that's perfectly fine. You can solve any circuit with either of these methods, but for some circuits it's easier if you use one or the other. Okay, so that's why I'm going to try and teach you both of them. All right, so let's go ahead and get into an example so we can see what exactly is going on here. So for this example, we'll have a 20 volt source, okay, a 20 ohm resistor in series with the source, and then let's go ahead and make one closed loop here with a 30 ohm resistor. And parallel to this, we will put a 10 ohm resistor, and this is a 50 ohm resistor. Okay, so this is the circuit that we're going to solve. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do for mesh current is we have to label. Okay, we have to label the currents through our meshes. Okay, so you can see here pretty easily. Uh, that there are two closed loops or two meshes in this circuit. Okay, so there's this closed loop here, which I'll call one, and there's this closed loop here, which I'll call two. Okay. And notice for these, I'm going clockwise. You can go counterclockwise if you want to, but for me, it's just easier to go clockwise. So, uh, so we have these two closed loops, number one and no or number one and number two. Okay, so remember Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum, okay, I'll, I'll rewrite it in a different way. Okay, so Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of all the voltage rises has to equal the sum of all the voltage drops. Okay? So if you have a voltage rise from a source, that has, there has to be an equal drop across a resistor okay? or across multiple resistors. All right? So for this, uh, instead of having number one and number two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these as currents. So instead of having one, I'll call this one I1. Instead of having two, I'll call this one I2. Okay, and just to make sure you can see that ohm symbol there, I'll rewrite that. So we have I1 and I2. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do, or the first equation that we're going to write, is Kirchhoff's voltage law in this first loop. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scoot down a little bit more. I'll zoom out and scoot down. I'm going to use the green color to 
uh, show my thought process or to show where I'm getting this equation from. So I'm going to start in this bottom left corner here. Okay. So bottom left corner and we're going clockwise. We go up and then we have a 20 volt rise and we get to here. Okay. So we have a 20 volt rise. I'm going to put all the rises on the left side and all the drops on the right side of the equation. So it's going to be rises over here on the left. This is rises. And over here on the right side of the equal sign, I will put all the drops. Okay. So we've got all that. Let me get rid of that. So we've got 20 volt rise. Now we're in this top left corner. Okay. Now we're going through this resistor to here. So we need to know the voltage in that resistor. And the way we can write it, remember voltage from Ohm's law is equal to current times resistance. So we can write this voltage drop as the current, which is I1, because we labeled this current as I1, times the resistance, which is 20 ohms. Okay? And I'm going to rewrite this just because it's a little bit easier for me whenever I'm putting this into my calculator or anything. I'll do 20 ohms, open parentheses, I1. Okay. So now we're in this top right corner of this first mesh, and now we need to go down through that 30 ohm resistor. Okay. So we're going to do another voltage drop and it'll be 30 ohms times. Now initially you might think that we should put I1 here, but what you'll notice is that for this resistor, for this resistor we have I1 over here on the left hand side, I1, and then on the right hand side of it we have I2 going up. Okay, So the total current that's going through this resistor, and this is what we're going to put in the equation, is going to be I1 minus I2. Okay, So then once we get down here to this corner, we're back to where we started. So this is, the, this is our first equation. So let me rewrite it, 20 volts over here, just to make it a little more compact. And I'll say this is our first equation. I'll switch to a blue color and now we can look at the second mesh. So for the second mesh we're going to start in this bottom left corner of the second mesh. Okay, Because remember the second mesh is the mesh on the right hand side. So we'll start in this bottom left corner and we're going to go clockwise. So let's go up. Let me, let me erase this. Okay. So we're going to go up through this 30 ohm resistor up to the top. Okay, So Go ahead and put our equal sign. Remember, we're going to put our rises, our voltage rises on the left and the drops on the right. So since we're going through a resistor, this is going to be a voltage drop. Okay, so it's going to go on the right hand side, 30 ohms times the current through that resistor. Okay, but since we changed directions, so previously, whenever we were looking at this green line, we were moving down this way. Now, since we're moving up this direction, Okay, the direction of our current or the direction of the drop has changed. So instead of doing I1 minus I2, I2 is going in the direction we're interested in, okay, because the blue is going up and I2 is also going up. Okay, and then I1 is going in the opposite direction. So that's why it's I2 minus I1. Okay, so now we're up at this top left corner of the second mesh. Now we go over here. Okay, so we're passing through that 10 ohm resistor. So this is another drop, so it'll be plus 10 ohms times, all we have here through this resistor is I2. Okay, so plus 10 ohms times I2. Okay, so then we have one more. We drop through this 50 ohm resistor, so it'll be plus, oops, let me clean that up. It'll be plus 50 ohms times, once again, I2. Okay, so now we get back to where we started at. Okay, so we didn't have any voltage rises, so what that means is that that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, so that means that uh, the sum of all those voltage drops is equal to zero because we didn't have any voltage rises. Okay, now initially that might seem a little that might seem a little weird. You know, how can we have voltage drops if we don't have any voltage rises? And the answer to that is that 30 ohm resistor uh, in the in the final it, what we'll find is that in the final instance, the current through that 30 ohm resistor, the total current is going down. Okay, so I1 is greater than I2. And pretty much all that means is that whenever we start in this bottom, or whenever we start at the bottom left hand corner of this second mesh here and go up, our voltage is actually increasing. So going through that 30 ohm resistor is technically a rise, but for the case of this equation, we're going to write it as a drop. Okay, so we have. 
these two resistors, or we, sorry, we have these two equations here. So now you'll see we have two unknowns, the two currents, and then we have two equations. So this gives us enough information to completely solve this circuit. Now, I don't, I don't really like doing these by hand. And uh, I don't encourage you to do them by hand because in most cases you're going to have a calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and just give you the answer. The answer is I1 is equal to 500 milliamps. Or that's also 0 0.5 amps. I2 is equal to 166.7 milliamps or 0 0.1667 amps. Okay, So now we have these two values for the mesh currents. Okay. So I'm going to move down and rewrite this circuit. That way we can just sort of analyze it because I think the mesh current method is a little bit less intuitive than the node voltage method. So I want to talk about it a little bit more just so we can make sense of that result. Okay. So let me write down all the resistors again. I'll annotate them. So this was 20 ohms, 30 ohms, 10 ohms, and 50 ohms with a 20 volt source. Okay, So we know now that I1 is equal to 500 milliamps. Okay, So the current from here all the way to here is 500 milliamps. Okay, so let me let me rewrite that because that takes up a good amount of space. So I'll 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 write it a little bit differently. So we know that this current is 500 milliamps. The current through this 20 ohm resistor is 500 milliamps. Okay, but now this 30 ohm resistor, like we said before, we have this I1. We have a current that's going down I1, and then we also have I2, a current that's going up. Okay, so all we have to do, <coughs> excuse me, is pretty much add those two together, but since we're keeping the polarities intact, or since we're since they're going different directions, they're actually going to cancel each other out. So what it'll be is I'm going to write the current going downward, okay, since we're going downward, this will be 500 milliamps minus I2, which is 166.7 milliamps. So that ends up being, let me, let me go ahead and just put that in my calculator right now because I didn't have that answer in front of me. 500 minus 166.7 that gives 333.3 .3 milliamps okay so the current going down through the 30 ohm resistor is 333.3 .3 milliamps okay. now similarly we come back and we know I2 is equal to 166.7 so that means the current here 166.7 milliamps the current down through the 50 ohm resistor is 166.7 milliamps. Okay. So now this circuit is completely solved. Oh, wait. Okay, yes. So now this circuit is completely solved. Okay. Sorry, I got a little bit confused there because <laughs> I wanted to make... But anyways, this circuit is completely solved. All right. And now all of these answers are correct. Okay, so now we know the values of the current at every place in the circuit, and all we have to do is use Ohm's law to solve for all these different voltages. Okay, so this is the mesh current method. Uh, this is the gist of it. It's very simple and very similar to the node voltage method, although it does have some slight differences. And personally, I think it's less intuitive, which is why I want to offer you some good and kind of robust explanations and make sure that intuitively you understand what is happening here. Okay, so let me scroll down in my notes. And we can go down and do a, another example. So let me write out this next circuit. Okay, and this one will be a little more complex. That way we can just make sure we have a full understanding of this method. Okay, So we're going to start off with these two resistors here. This is 3 ohms. This is 6 ohms. Okay, and then we'll have a 2 ohm resistor here and a 5 ohm resistor here. So this is 2 ohms and 5 ohms. And then we'll have one more 2 ohm resistor up this way. Okay, so this is the circuit that we want to solve. Okay, so from this, we can see that there are three closed loops, okay? So I'm going to write out the mesh currents like I did in the previous one. I'll call this one I1. Okay, I'll call this one over here I2. And I'll call this one I3 tried to write that one out of the way that way I wouldn't cover up the value of resistance here okay so now we're just gonna do the same thing that we did previously okay so let me use the black color I'll write the equation for mesh one okay so for mesh one 
I'm going to start off in the bottom left corner. And the first thing we have is a 12 volt rise. So the rises go on the left, so I'll put 12 volts. Okay. And now there's not going to be any other rises here. Okay. Because all of everything else is a resistor. So we have our 12 volt rise and that's it on the left hand side. Okay, so then we have a 3 ohm resistance times the value of current. And in this case, the only current that is reaching the 3 ohm resistor is I1. So it's just 3 ohms times I1. Alright, so now the next, the next uh, resistor or the next component in this node is going to be the 6 ohm resistor. So we'll do plus 6 ohms times the current through that resistor. So the current is going to be uh, it's going to be affected by I1 and I2. So for here we'll write I1 minus I2. Now once again, the reason that we're doing I1 minus I2 instead of I2 minus I1 is because we're going around the loop in this direction. Okay, So that means for this resistor we're going in the downward direction. Now this I1 is also going in the downward direction, so it's going to it's going to be in the same direction as our loop, so it's going to be positive. This I2 is going up, so it's going in the opposite direction, which is why it's negative. Okay, so we have I1 minus I2 here. And that's it for mesh 1, because now we're back where we started. So now we can go over, I'll switch over to the red color for mesh 2. So for mesh 2, we'll start in the bottom left corner. The first thing that we have is that we have that 6 ohm resistor, so 6 ohms. Now this time, you know, we started in this bottom left corner and we're going up and around. So we're going up through this resistor. Okay, so since I2 is also going up, it'll be positive. And since I1 is going down, it'll be negative. So in this case, we're doing I2 minus I1. Okay? So then the next resistance we see is the 2 ohm resistor. So we'll do 2 ohms times I2 minus I3. Okay, because I3 is going in the opposite direction. Okay? And now we only have one more, it's that 5 ohm resistor. So 5 ohms times the only current it sees is I2. All right? So we didn't have any voltage rises here, so on that left hand side of the equation it's just going to be 0. Okay, 0 volts. So 0 is equal to 6 times I2 minus I1 plus 2 times I2 minus I3 plus 5 times I2. Okay, so now we only have one last mesh, mesh 3. So mesh 3, we're going to start in this bottom left corner of the mesh, okay, Bo bottom left corner of mesh 3. You can go ahead and write down 0 volts on the left hand side because you'll see we don't have any sources, so we're not going to have any voltage rises, okay. So start off on that left hand side and we'll do, uh, well, sorry, we'll start off in the bottom left of the mesh and then the first thing we'll see is that top 2 ohm resistor. So that'll be 2 ohms times the only current it sees is I3. All right, so then the next is going to be the bottom 2 ohm resistor. So that'll be plus 2 ohms times I3. And then we have I2 going the opposite direction, so minus I2. Okay? So that's the only equation, that's all we need for mesh 3. So what you can see here again is that we have three equations and three unknowns. So that means that we can plug this into any of our linear solvers and we'll get out the correct answers. Okay? So like I said, it's similar to the last time I'll give you the answers and you can verify them on your own, whichever method you want to use. So the answer is I1 equals 2 amps, I2 equals 1 amp, and I3 equals 500 milliamps. And I checked this and made sure that this is correct. So this, these are the correct answers. And uh, just play around with this in your own solver. You know, if you're using a calculator, great. If you want to use your computer or just Google a linear equation solver, that's perfectly fine. Okay, because it's all just going to bring you to the same answer here. Okay, uh, so just before we end this, I'm going to go ahead and bring it on down. That way we can look and see at these values one more time. Because like I said, I really don't think that the mesh current method is, a, is as intuitive as the node voltage method. So I'd like to spend a little extra time on it just to make sure that our understanding of it is solid. Okay, so let me rewrite this circuit here. Make sure we have all of our values. So this is 2 ohms, 2 ohms, 5 ohms, 6 ohms, and 3 ohms. 
okay, and a 12 volt source. So let's come up here and look. We see that I1 is equal to 2 amps. Okay, so that means that this current through the source and through this 3 ohm resistor is 2 amps. Okay. So now the current through the 6 ohm resistor, okay, that's going to be I1 minus I2. Okay, so the current, sorry, let me make sure I'm being clear on this. The current going down through this resistor is I1 minus I2. Okay, so I1 minus I2 is just 1 amp, so we know that there is 1 amp going down through that resistor. Okay, now let's look back at those, let's do the 5 ohm resistor first, okay, because that one's a little bit easier. The 5 ohm resistor, it only sees I2, which is 1 amp, so that means that there is 1 amp going through that 5 ohm resistor. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at I3. Right? I3, we said is 500 milliamps, so we can already say that this top 2 ohm resistor has, let me get that out of the way because that's kind of getting a little, little clump. So this, this is going to be 500 milliamps going through that top 2 ohm resistor. Okay? Now for this bottom 2 ohm resistor, for this bottom 2 ohm resistor here, okay, we have uh, I2, okay, and let me make sure I'm being clear. But for this bottom 2 ohm resistor, I'm interested in the current that's going to the right. And we can see that that is I2 minus I3. Okay, so I2 is 1 amp, I3 is 500 milliamps, so that'll also be 500 milliamps. And what you can do is you can go through and see that Kirchhoff's voltage law is satisfied. Okay, if you use Ohm's law to find the voltages everywhere, you will see that Kirchhoff's voltage law is satisfied. Uh, you'll see that Kirchhoff's current law is satisfied. So we have completely solved this circuit using the mesh current method. So like I said, you know, I've, I've said this a bunch of times during this video, but I want to say it again. This method, I think, is less intuitive than node voltage. So if you have any questions, please leave comments, because if I can provide a better explanation, I definitely want to. Otherwise, if you like this content, please feel, feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. You can check out my website, axeelectronic.com, for more. Otherwise, I'm Aaron Carmen, and thank you for watching.